we've recovered from putting down those 10 square frames and so now we're just going to go through and clean up put in the sills and see if the choice of cutting the mortises for the sills beforehand um, bore fruit or gave me some problems. We've made up this template um, both port and starboard to help line up the the gun ports and determine the level of each of the gun port sills. So you already see there's a slight difference. I hope that doesn't give us problems <laughs> as we go along. And just to remember that uh, in my case this uh, template gives us the top line so we have to take five inches down from that line. To find exactly where the, um, the sill goes, the very good advice um, in the book to make up um, a small template um, with the angle already established in it. And as you sand the frames to take the sills down, you simply place this little template onto the two frames that you're sanding and it'll give you a very good idea. A of the levelness of the the sill and um, of how it's going to fit into the the mortise that you're going to cut. We made up this little jig um, to give us an absolutely square grind. It's a perfect um, square grind on either side. And then we come and we fit it in. And a small amount to take off again. So we keep going back and forward until we get it right, taking off the smallest amount each time. And this time we've got a perfect fit. And this is what it looks like when it's all done. This is the port side and this is the starboard side. Certainly not the best and there were clearly some issues. Um, but I can live with I can live with how it's come out. Today we are going to put the extension of the frames above the gun ports so we had marked each of the excess pieces that we had cut off so now all we do is we measure the thickness of the the distance between the, the frame and you'll get a measurement then you measure the thickness of the two frames that you're going to put in the extent the pieces that you've cut off minus the opening between the side frames of the gun port from the thickness of the frames and then divide that number by three and that will give you the size of the spacings. We've um, done that here, we have the spacings and now we're going to simply draw a line at the top for the height of the that we need to cut the frames and then we'll simply stick it and wait for it to dry. I am not going to show you the internal and external sanding because we've did this already. Um, I will say that um, 
I didn't use a respirator and I've had to take a few days off um, as the dust got in my nostrils and I had a terrible sinus attack. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that going forward but quite clearly the system that I used to do it outdoors in the wind didn't work very well and um, I do think we have to be very careful. I'm not pinning it yet as suggested in the book. There are still two frames that I may take out at a later point in time. So I think I'm going to go at least 10 more frames in on either side. Um, because I'm not 100% sure what the minimum thickness of the frames are to be. And I suspect they need to come down quite a bit more in terms of the finishing, in which case it's not necessary to take out the two frames. Um, they're just not lining up perfectly at the top here. Um, and so a simple solution is to simply take them out. One of the emails I got from Greg uh, made reference to a thickness of the top of the frame at 5 inches. Um, and I haven't found an exact thickness of the, the top and bottom sill on the gun frame as yet. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll write Greg and just ask and that will in fact lead me to make the decision about whether I should take the frame out or whether in fact if I can sand it down and get it to the correct thickness uh, for the, the finish of the frame. The other decision I've made is that I am not going to cut the mortises on the frames on the flat. I'm going to cut them when they're installed on the model. Um, I just had too much work to do and I found I could actually do it quite accurately on the model. It just takes a little more time. And once you have a template like this, um, it's just so much easier and you're absolutely guaranteed to get it correct um, and you get the sweeper port lining up with the silk port. So that's the other takeaway that I've got from here is the frames will go up and the gun ports will be put in after. I've uh, got back a response from Greg and uh, um, he confirmed much of what I, I felt. First of all, that it's natural that you will have some difference in the spacing at the top and that you shouldn't be too concerned about it. Um, the fairing actually starts at the bottom, comes up to middle section and then goes to the top. And the other thing that I found interesting is he says if you put your hand on it with sandpaper, you will actually feel the high spots and that when those high spots disappear, you'd know you, you have the hull properly fared. Um, he suggests using the pencil test, which is simply putting a, a line, a pencil line on the hull and then as you sand, as you sand the model, the um, the low spots you'll see the pencil remaining on the on the on the frame. Um, so that's really um, what his advice was, which was in a sense quite rewarding because that's what I've been doing. We sort of run to the end of this gambit, um, so we're going to bring this video to an end. Um, as we go forward, we're going to take another plunge in my learning process, and with the next set of frames which is 10 through 6 um, in the stern. We're going to install chocks instead of scarf joints with one exception as defined in the plan and we'll see how this goes. So thanks for watching.